welcome to Bethel Online. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching us today, it's by no accident. We believe that God has something just for you. Here at Bethel, we believe that when real people, people like you and me, encounter the real Jesus, real change happens. So our hope and prayer for you is that you have an encounter with Jesus today. We also believe that God has a next step for all of us to take. Today, your step may just be watching this week's message. It could be asking God to forgive you and finally putting your hope and trust and faith in Jesus for the first time. Maybe it's being baptized or beginning to read through the Bible, whatever it is. We want to help you take that next step. You can let us know what step you're taking by texting the word online to 765-433-2004. We would love to walk with you. During this season, God is teaching us to be flexible. It seems like every week there's a new challenge and more and more changes. A great way to stay up to date on all the changes that's happening at Bethel is to follow us on social media. It's also a great way to listen to current and past Sunday morning messages. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram. You can find us on all these platforms by searching Bethel Putco. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. We know, we want you to know that you are wanted, you are welcomed here, and that you are loved. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Good morning. Welcome to Bethel. We're so glad you joined us online. Today, we're in week two of a series called Practice. You know, in most churches across the country and many around the world, pastors use the month of January as a reset, much like the rest of the world do. And it's a chance to kind of look at where we are as a church and where we're going and look at the overall health of our people. And many pastors use that as a time to remind people to get in the word and to pray. What often happens though, is unintentionally, we create a checklist of the things that we should do if we're following Jesus. Last week, I began to talk about the importance of reading God's word, of being rooted in the word of God as a follower of Jesus, that in order to know the direction God wants us to go, we need to know who God is. And we know that by getting in his word, that it's not just a book about what God did. It's a book about who God is and God wants to use it to form us. But over the course of the week, I had multiple conversations with individuals who shared with me that oftentimes when it came to reading the Bible, the Bible became a source of guilt for them that, or, a, or a source of failure, that it was a reminder every time that they heard the pastor talk about reading the Bible, that they had tried a plan, they had tried a program, that they had failed, or that it had become a source of major stress because they struggled to understand what they were reading. I don't want our church to operate out of a guilt or shame model. I want you to know that reading the word of God is important, but at the same time, I don't want it to become a checklist because while some of those people have never really gotten into the word of God, there are also people who have read the word of God. They know the word of God, but they're largely unchanged by it. That we don't want you just to read a passage in order to check off a box. We believe that the word of God empowers transformation and change in our life. And if asked, most people will say, yes, there's a change I'd love to see in my life. You see, many of us think about a relationship with God as something that starts and just happens from there on. That, but God starts our faith with our salvation. He offers us salvation through his son. But see, God didn't just save us once. He continues to save us. We often talk about salvation, but the reason that we continue to practice the things of God after we've experienced salvation is that God wants to do a continual saving of us by transforming our lives in a process that church people often call sanctification. And so as we talk about practice this week, I'd like to first start off by telling you that Jesus did not come to make you feel guilty or condemned. 
The scripture tells me that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish. But he did not come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. And God's word is to share that truth into our lives. God does not just want a one-time interaction with us. He wants a process where we continue to continually interact and connect with him. The title of my message today is Reading God's Mind. How many of you in a relationship have ever had a moment where you're like, man, I really wish I could read his mind. I really wish I could read her mind. If you're married, you've probably had moments where you didn't understand what your spouse was doing or what they were thinking. If you've ever parented, you probably have been there. Or maybe you have a boss at work and you're like, what do they want from me? Like, I don't know. I don't understand. I clearly am not getting it. I really believe that one of the great struggles of many of us who have experienced salvation is that the process of sanctification where God continues to transform us is not happening because we're not able to read God's mind, that we don't have the same thoughts as God. And so as a matter of fact, it's not in our nature to immediately understand God that God desires for us to seek him so that he can transform us. God seeks us out so we can have a relationship with him, not so we can have a religious checklist. You see, growth isn't all about the list of things you do. It's about who you're becoming. Transformation is not about a list of things that you do. You can read your Bible and you can pray and you can be generous and you can do all these things. They are not the point. The point is the change that God uses those things to create the transformation that most of us need once we have a relationship with him. You see, practice is important because practice is what we, what we practice is what we become. But the practices alone don't change us. It's the practice plus the presence of the Holy Spirit that brings us to a place of growth. So I'm going to talk again today about getting into the Word of God. And maybe I can bring it in a light that doesn't come at you as if it's from a place of guilt or shame or you should feel bad. Or maybe you've been in a place before with somebody who really knew the Word of God, knew it well, had spent years in it, and you just felt, you looked at it, and you're like, I just don't understand. I want to come at it from an approach where you're set up for success to have a continued relationship with God over time. Can you admit that any good relationship has multiple ways of communication? That it's not just, I'm not just saying to God, God is also speaking to me. We would all know that our health in our relationship was unhealthy if our spouse stopped talking to us, that our relationship between us and our kids would be unhealthy if only the communication was going one direction. And when we deeply love someone, we seek deeper connection through communication. See, reading the Bible allows us to understand the mind of God. There's this temptation when it comes to reading the Word to, to like, well, I read my chapter, but I, my goal isn't for you just to read a chapter each day this year. It is a goal for our church to read through the New Testament. But I think if we make it about that goal, it is possible to read a chapter a day but gain nothing. And so how do I, how do I really begin to understand the mind of God as I read the Scriptures? You know, I love a road trip. Now, before I had back surgery a few years ago, I loved to get in a car and go on a long trip. But now, after an hour, I can get really sore in the back and kind of miserable. But if I have a home base and we go on vacation and I, I love to explore new areas, I love to get around and see some things. When we moved to Putnam County, like a lot of days early on when I was here, I just drove around the county because I wanted to see the things that, the, that, that our local community had to offer that were here. Where do the people live? Uh, who, where, where, what is available in this community? Where are the schools at? And I've learned over the years that you don't necessarily have to have a huge plan to go on a road trip. You don't have to have things mapped out perfectly. As a matter of fact, for me, it's often more fun and life is often more fun and spontaneous when I don't have a perfect plan. 
that it's often in those moments that I wind up having the greatest enjoyment because I happen across something that I didn't know and, and something that I had never seen before, and then I get to experience it. When we read the Word of God, let's read for depth, not distance. Now, when I say that, some of you are going to wrestle with this feeling of, well, I read it, and it seems pretty point blank, but I don't really understand exactly what's here. What I'm saying to you is it's not just words on a page. It's words that God wants to take root in your heart. And often the reading for depth and not distance is reminding ourselves that growth is an encounter and a journey. It's not just this one event that changes everything. It's a continued encounter with God over time. It's a journey that we go on. The journey is not fully had in the driveway of the place you're leaving, nor on the location that you finally arrive at. While that may have the greatest impact on you, there's the journey of going through the entire thing that make a road trip good. And so we're going to talk about getting through God's Word and going into God's Word as if we're going on a road trip. See, growth happens and, and change happens one step at a time. So what do I do if I'm going on a road trip? The first thing you have to make sure of is actually takes a little effort and energy, right? You have to make sure you've got something in the tank, that your tank is full. I have run out of gas, I think, twice in my entire life. One was on my first date with my wife and it was a total accident. I borrowed my buddy's car and he was like, hey man, it's running on fumes. You wanna go straight to the gas station. Well, unfortunately, there wasn't a gas station in the parking lot of the college I went to and it died. And Laura and I spent a lot of our first date literally walking with a gas can to get gas back in my buddy's borrowed car to fill the tank. We couldn't go anywhere, we couldn't experience anything until we got gas in the tank. As you get into God's Word, I would encourage you not to make it just about reading the Word. I believe that part of what has to happen for us to have a, a, a solid experience in the Word of God is to fill our tank. That it's not just about writing and checking off a box, that we actually need to allow the Spirit of God to move in us. That before we get into the process of reading the Word, one of the things we can do is just take a minute and say, God, will you show yourself to me? God, will you fill me with your Holy Spirit so that your word will come alive to me, so that I'll be able to see what you would have me to see? So many times we get ready for vacation as a family and we get ready to head out the door and we've been in a stress and a strain and life has been crazy and we've been tag team back and forth. You go, pick, you get the kids here, I'll get the kids there. And and you take care of dinner and I'll take care of the dishes. I'll take care of this and you take care of that. And there's a moment on the trip where we finally look at each other and say, hey, you, we're on vacation. Hey, we're, we're at the destination. I think for many of us in the busyness and hectic time of our life, because we have to live life by a checklist, when we get around to God's word, it's really easy to not take the breath and realize that the Word of God is right in front of us and God wants to fill us with it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 14, Paul says this, he says, we, What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given us. What he's telling the people is we do not operate by the Spirit of the world. And in order for us to understand and comprehend the mind of God in a more clear way, we have to recognize that God's word might impact us. It might, it, we might need God and we will need God and we will need the Holy Spirit in order to experience God's word fully. He says, what we received is not a spirit of the world, but a spirit who is from God. He's talking to God's people. If you follow Jesus if you've received him and accepted him, the Holy Spirit is willing to speak to you through God's word. He said, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. The man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually concerned discerned. We need the Holy Spirit. So take that first moment to allow God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. 
And I found over the years that it's not so much that God is a problem as to whether or not God is willing to fill my mind with his thoughts. It's more often my posture toward God. Am I willing and ready to hear from God? They are spiritually discerned. Before you open your Bible, take a minute, open your heart. Now, for some of you, you're like, oh, great. I got to pray for like 10 minutes. I got to do this and I got to talk to God about everything. Maybe the first step is hearing from God, but being ready to hear from God. Before you open your Bible, open your heart. God is willing to let his Holy Spirit move in you as you are in his word and capable of reaching you where you're at in your level of knowledge, in your level of understanding, and your reading expertise. God is capable, whether you struggle with it or whether you think you are brilliant at it, you have to open your your heart before God's word can move in it. God does not force himself on us. Number two, choose your road. See, I can say all day long, I think I'm gonna go somewhere. I think I'm gonna do some driving around, but at some point you have to turn out of your driveway and pick a road. I mean. I personally think Putnam County is a great place to live. Maybe you don't, but I've lived in several places around Indiana, and I, I love this county. There's a little of everything. There are hills, there are trees, there are creeks, there are rivers. There, I mean, th- there are lakes. There are anything from hills in northern Putnam County that you can look down over Big Walnut to the West Walnut. There, there's a beautiful county. There's a lot to offer from all the way to downtown. But... If you're going to go on a road trip, sometimes you got to kind of choose your road. Now, we have chosen this year to work our way through the New Testament, to go on a journey through the New Testament starting in Matthew. And I would encourage you to do that, to follow that reading plan, to look at BiblePlan.org, or even to, to, to pick another plan and follow it. But you do have to choose your road and to say, you know what, I'm going to get on this road and I'm going to travel it. I'm going to see it. Um, there'll be parts of the road that are in scenes along the way that are excellent. And there'll be parts that I'm like, well, it was a road and I didn't really grasp anything from that. But second Timothy chapter three, verse 16 says, all scripture is inspired by God and it's useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and teaches us to do what is right. We travel that road. I, w- I was thinking about it this way this morning, that scripture Sometimes as we study scripture, we think, well, I'm going to study this and it's going to transform anything. I'm going to find something that is new and I'm going to like have this moment, this moment of epiphany. But really a relationship begins with a moment like that. But God often allows continued moments and continued encounters over a period of time. I was thinking about how we, we have, this, have this glass of water, right? And it's just, it's just water. It's room temperature water. And that's just what it is, right? And I have a tea bag. And if I put a little, a little uh, tea bag in there and I bounce it around a few times, um, you can maybe see a little something out of that. But it's basically just water with a little color to it. And often when we read scripture, we might expect that we put the bag in the water and we read the scripture and all of a sudden there's going to be a massive change in us. But the reality is oftentimes it's not a one-time thing of getting into God's word to help us understand the way God thinks. That part of it is allowing it, allowing us to go through the roads and the places to get where we're going in order for God to do things over time. Great road trips don't need to be hurried. As a matter of fact, if somebody's like, we've got to go somewhere, let's take a trip across the state and I have to hurry to get there. I promise you it's not going to be as enjoyable. I don't think you have to take all your time. You don't have to sit for hours. There are, I I have buddies who are like, I sit down and read the Bible for two hours every morning. And I'm like, good on you. But I read for 15 minutes and I'm like, is there a squirrel moving in the yard? Um, I, I got a buddy that says, I spend an hour in prayer before I'll even leave my house of a morning. I'm like, well, I have children. I have to get them to school. And, um, I pray for five minutes. And I'm next thing you know, I'm praying for like my toe. I, I do pray for people. I have a relationship with God, but I, I don't think that necessarily that's what God is after is for us to just torture ourselves. And that's why I think it's important to look at the word with depth rather than trying to read for distance all the time. So we can say, we check some things off the box. 
2 Timothy tells us all of Scripture is inspired by God. The whole trip, the whole journey is inspired by God. The highs, the lows, the moments that are of beauty and the moments that are of pain, the moments of misunderstanding and understanding are all a part of a journey where God is taking us from where we are to where He wants us to. The third thing you have to do on a good road trip is slow down and enjoy the scenery. To slow down and enjoy the scenery. I was reading a a book recently about the early gold rush and how many people were in such a hurry to get to the far west that they passed many places where there was gold because of where gold had been found. They were looking over and passing over spots later that they wished they had stopped at where there were greater deposits of gold, but they they kept passing. I think when we get into God's word, we need to slow down and enjoy it. One man was quoted as saying that they passed stream after stream after stream. They crossed all of these streams. And and finally, one day, he stopped at a place and sat down to make lunch. And he began to see that the water, how clear the water was. And he began to see the beauty of the place and the life in the water where they, and, and as he looked, he looked down into the soil and, or into the soil under the water and saw a glimmer of gold, and he began one of the largest halls of gold in his entire life. Sometimes, when it comes to God's Word, we have to get in there, slow down, enjoy the scenery so we actually see what's there. So we experience what's actually there, read it in a way. There's a passage that, that was one of my devotional passages for the week, and the passage is in Colossians chapter 3. And I can read this passage, I've read this passage a lot of times, but it says, Since then you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. I can begin to read this and I can think, oh, I've read this before. I know this, right? Set your minds on the things above, not of earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever brings uh, belongs to your earthly nature and more sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. And you can just read and all of a sudden you're through it and you're like, oh, that was a pretty kind of poetic passage. But if you slow down, you might see that in verse 16 of that passage, he says, let the peace of Christ, if you read it slowly, if you take a minute, rather than saying, I digested all of this, maybe you slow down on one of the spots where there's beauty And you find something and you're like, wow, what does that have to do with my life? When I get to verse 16, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with wisdom. Let the peace of Christ Rule in your hearts richly. When we get into the word, it's often a moment to say, God, am I allowing your word in this moment to dwell in me? And it's one thing to say it's in my mind, in my brain, but it's another to have allowed it to take root in your heart to where it's actually living in you. It's not something out there you know. It's something inside of you that is a truth Slow down and enjoy the scenery. I would encourage you that what often happens actually in in these reading plans is it's possible for you to rush through your chapter, but it might be more beneficial to find a place of beauty and stop and and literally recognize what you're seeing and take a picture of it and, and look at the reflection in the water to see what's staring back at you in regard to this place. Which brings to light number four, I think when you go on a road trip, you got to have some stops. Like when I'm traveling to get to a destination, I can be tempted to just run down the road. Like people would be like, I got to pee. And I'll be like, I didn't hear that. What? Did somebody talk from the back seat? And just keep forcing it until somebody finally makes a stop. We went a few years ago to Gatlinburg and... Um, my family's from the mountains of Kentucky, some of my family, and I've been around the mountains. It's beautiful. I appreciate it. But we went to Gatlinburg, and I really just wanted to, we had to get to our hotel by a certain time, and, and uh, we had a baby with us, and she was crying a lot. And 
uh, everybody was wanting to let's stop and eat. Let's stop and do this. And I was like, let's just get there already. And you know what? It wasn't until we got almost there and traffic was backed up that I decided to pull off at a spot and take a break. And the view there was incredible, but really I had just passed like 20 of these stopping cynic viewpoint spots because I was in too much of a hurry to stop. And when I finally did, I heard the water that I had been seeing. When I finally stopped, I took a breath and the stress and strain of the trip started to wash off a little bit. The frustration and irritation that I was feeling, I pulled off at a cynic viewpoint and I, and I recognized it. Let's let the word of God dwell in us richly. Like, that God is telling them in Colossians 3.16 is that I have my, God is sharing his word, but are we willing to let it dwell in us? That so often the scripture can be like the reflection of water that it reflects back to us the truth. So often the parts of our life that actually need change have to be addressed as lies in our life. I have a recurring thing that happens to me every time I go to the beach. We go through the rush of travel. We get on a plane. We fly to the beach. We get there. We check in the hotel. We like to be there by 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. Take a straight through flight. We get there. And when we get there, we're usually waiting for our room to open up. And there's a moment where we all finally get in our swimming stuff and we, we go down to the beach. And I peek my head around the corner from where our hotel is and I see the beach. And I remember that like, that thing goes in and out, in and out. And the sun goes up and the sun goes down. I did nothing to make any of that happen. And God is taking care of things. And it often is a reminder to a guy who lives life constantly trying to do everything in my power to keep things under control. It's a reminder to me of the truth that I'm not in control, that God is, and that my life is better when I allow God to control my life. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly by taking a minute and taking an honest look at what's in front of you. I think in parenting, this is one of the hardest parts. Parenting can get so busy that we begin to make it about getting everyone where they need to go, not preparing a heart for life. Now, most of us don't hold our kids and say, I can't wait to be the busiest people in town. Most of us don't hold our, our kids and say, I can't wait till all we do is rush around and I bark at you all the time about you doing everything you're supposed to. Most of us intend to prepare our kids' hearts for real life. And that's what a loving God wants to do for us when we get into his word. And in order for that to happen, we have to allow for the time for God's word to dwell in us. Number five. Take a picture of yourself. We live in a selfie world, don't we? Where people take pictures of themselves so that others can see them taking pictures of themselves. But there is some value, right? In, in social media, we, we often laugh about people taking selfies of themselves. And now after like 10 years, we're looking back at these old pictures and sometimes we're like, why did I take a picture of that? But when we look at those pictures, we can remind, be reminded of where we've been of what we've done, of our history and our past and our life. Sometimes when we get into God's word, it's a good moment to take a picture of where we are, to, to say, okay, God, here's where I'm at and here's your word. Take a picture of yourself. Go ahead, do it. I wonder how many times people go on vacations and they go on trips and you know, you get on the beach and you decide, I'm not going to take a family picture right now because I'm feeling a little fat. So you take a picture of your three adorable kids to give this picture of, but you never address the, how you felt in that moment. Like God's word really does want to deal with the things in our life that are hindering us. And 30 years later, you'll wish you had taken that picture. You take a picture of yourself. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, The work of God is at work in you who believe. That where you are right now is not where God is taking you. You'll want to remember what God has done. That so often our faith grows by stepping out and stepping into a risk. And then our faith can grow. And the word of God can work in us as we're honest about what's been driving our life. 
Six, send home a postcard. We don't do this much in our world anymore, but when I was a kid, um, <clears throat> my grandma, my dad's mother, sent me two or three postcards from when she would go somewhere. She would go maybe travel with one of my aunts or go to visit one of my aunts. And uh, she would went to Reno and visited my aunt. And I, I've got a postcard at my house that was written from her. She was a school teacher, beautiful handwriting. And she was telling me all the things about a place I had never been able to go before. Sent home a postcard to communicate back home. Some of the most treasured things that I have are, are a letter or two that I've got where, where somebody had written from war. Send, send home a postcard. Home for you as a follower of Christ and God's word is to God that maybe after you've experienced what you've experienced in God's word, after you've opened your heart, that now's actually the time to get around to the process of prayer, to the communication with God, that God has spoken into your life to you, and now's a good time for you to send home a postcard and say, God, I read this, that your word needs to dwell deeply in my heart. God, I don't want it to be something that I just know, but when I go to work today, when I'm raising my kids, when I'm loving my spouse, God, I want your word to dwell richly in me because I know that what comes out of me, what is inside of me will come out of me and it will impact those I love. It'll impact the people of the community. It'll impact the job that I work at and the, the career I have and the home that I live in and, and all of the environments in my local community. So we go to God in prayer as we get in his word. I understand for some of you, if you're like me, you live in a life where you have so many hours to do this, so many minutes to do this. I, I get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and at 6.15 I have to leave the gym because I have to go home and cook breakfast. And then at 7.30 I have to have all the kids, make sure the kids are all ready and we have to kind of, I take two kids to school, my wife takes one kid to school and then I have so much time to get to work and, and on, on Mondays I have so much time before it's time to record a message and, and, and then I, the, the days are, are lined out moment by moment sometimes. And for some of you, you're like, wait, I don't have the time to go on a huge road trip. Sometimes the things that we need to see are just down the road. Use whatever time you have, but take your time while using it. Make sure you don't just check out the box. Make sure you open your heart. Make sure that you take a deep breath. Make sure that you are willing to hear God's truth, that there is a God who wants to to richly bless you with his word that dwells in you. Use whatever time you have, but take your time while using it. Colossians 3, 1 through 17 might be a passage for you to read sometime this week, or you can read our reading plan, but you can look through Colossians chapter 3, verse 117. Take a minute to go through this passage the passage just starts with, since then, you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Since then implies that because of something, because you have a relationship with Jesus, because you've been raised with Christ, you weren't just saved by Christ, you're now being lifted up with Christ Set your hearts on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. That a part of getting in the word of God, understanding the mind of God, is really to help us experience the change that we need to continue to experience our salvation through a process and a journey. My friend, since you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Do you know what the symbolism of Christ sitting means in that passage? It meant that he took care of things. In, in, in the temple in Jesus's day, the rabbis were never, the, the priest was never allowed to sit down in the temple. It was a constant reminder that the work of the rabbi and the religious systems and the check boxes of the day were never done. But when Jesus came, 
lived a sinless life, died on the cross and rose from the dead, the scripture tells us that he sat down at the right hand of God. We can run by things like this in scripture, but maybe it would be so all life altering to the cares of our heart if we just saw this first verse telling us that God's taking care of the things we couldn't take care of. And all we have to do is set our hearts on the things above. That when we set our hearts on the things above, the things where we are begin to take care of themselves. My prayer for you is to live a less hurried 2022. I get it. Some of you are like, there's no way. What I know in life is that relationships, you, you can be super efficient in every area of life. You can be super efficient in the workplace, get your work done quickly, correctly, improve efficiency. I'm a guy who, I like efficiency. I, I like the idea of, I don't want to cook a dinner that takes hours. I like a, a dinner that I can efficiently place in the crock pot, efficiently get out of the crock pot that evening, efficiently wash the dishes, efficiently get done. And I live my life in a lot of that way. But something that I know is when it comes to relationships, you can't just check off the boxes and you can't make relationships efficient because people will begin to feel that they're a box to be checked off, not a person to be loved. We, we know that when someone has just checked off the box in coming to our house or checked off the box in dropping something off. And we also know when we've been connected to someone who knows us and we know them, One of those brings an incredible amount of meaning. The other is just one more thing to do. When it comes to our relationship with God, He doesn't expect every single waking moment of our life to be in His Word, but He wants to speak into every waking moment of our life with His Word. You see, something happens when we begin to get into the Word of God. See, when I put this bag in earlier, it was just water. When I dipped the bag once or twice, you could see a little change in the color. But as I spoke, this tea got a new identity. It it, it was water and now it's tea. It got a new identity. You see, as we allow God's word to dwell in us richly, it begins to change who we are. God grows our patience and our faith. God grows our generosity. As we practice, we prepare. Our church is reading through the New Testament this year. And you can go find plans at sites like www.bibleplan.org. They'll send you a daily email to remind you of where you're at. There are, we have papers at the church that have a yearly plan on them. You can find those papers all over the place, all over the internet. You can find plans. We have incredible access to an app called Through the Word. If you look it up in the app store, Through the Word, it looks like a Bible with a flame over the top. That app will seriously help streamline a process for you of getting into God's Word where you listen to some guys talk about the passage that you're about to read for about five minutes and then you read the passage it reads the passage to you you can follow it you can listen to it you can follow the actual words on the app you can put it over your if your bluetooth works in your car you can listen to it while you're driving to work the opportunity is there but don't let it just be a checkbox that either makes you feel guilt and shame because you just can't seem to get everything checked off because you're intimidated by God's word. Let it be a tool. And in that, when you get a chance to get into that tool, go for a journey. Because that's what God was after when he gave his son to allow us to be in a relationship with him, a constant relationship, a transforming. See, I don't want to be a church where we just talk about the fact that God offers salvation. 
I want us to all be living out the transformation that God allows in our lives too because it's the transformation in our lives that leads us to be able to do the works in our local community that actually change the face of it and give it a new identity and change us to look more like Jesus. Bethel, let the Word of God dwell richly in you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, take a moment if you haven't already to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages, you can view the messages from Sunday morning, and you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give. With online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.